today we are going to show you how to use external interrupt for real microcontroller and for this example we are going to use pic 16 f8 77a microcontroller so to do that first let us see the pin arrangement of pic 16 f8 77a microcontroller here we are seeing the pic 16 f8 77a as the dip package of 40 pin out of that we can see pin 33 pin 33 which is the pin rb0 that is port b0 pin that can also be used as the external interrupt or imp pin and we are going to use this particular pin for our external interrupt now we already know from our previous slide that we have described from there we already know that to enable or disable the interrupt you need to do it from both the level that is from global level and that is from the individual level and to set or to enable or to disable the interrupt you have to use few registers for this pic 16 f877a microcontroller the first name of the register is int pon so you have to use the int pon register to set the global and the individual bit for enabling the interrupt let us see the int pon register first so you can see this is the int pon register and here it is obviously of 8 bits okay starting from bit 0 to bit 7 and out of all these bits right now we will talk about these two bits that is the gie bit and the int bit the gie bit stands for the global interrupt enable so this bit has to be 1 otherwise otherwise what will happen otherwise whatever input you have none of them will work so this has to be set 1 to enable all the interrupt now to enable the individual interrupt which is associated with rb0 or int you have to make this bit that is int e is also the value should be 1 that means this is the final content of your int pon register this is written in binary and if you change it to hexadecimal code then it will become 90 hex so that means what that means for this particular example the int pon register has to be loaded with 90 hex now this rb0 or int pin is edge triggered what does it mean that if a low to high transition or a high to low transition occurs on this particular bit then only it will be considered as the interrupt now which one would you like to use rising edge or falling edge that can be configured that can be configured from one more register the name of the register is option underscore reg let us see this register out of this all these 8 bits this bit we will be talking about that is the int edge bit int edg bit and if you set this bit to 1 then the interrupt will occur on the rising edge and if you set it to 0 then the interrupt will occur at falling edge and for this example we are going to keep this as 00 hex this is the default value of option underscore adg register that means obviously this bit will get zero value so if it gets zero value that means our example will work on falling edge so that's it 
what is the final word that means if you have a valid transition that is from low to high or from high to low at this particular pin that is the rv0 pin then it will be considered as the interrupt and how the microcontroller will understand that this is the interrupt has occurred because it will set this bit intf bit of pin con register and this will be done on its own the user has to do nothing for that now when this intf flag bit is set then the microcontroller understands the one interrupt has occurred at the pin rb0 or pin 33 now you will see how to set up the circuit for this example so as you can see this uh, rb0 pin has been attached to with a particular switch that is a push switch so this has to be used as the input pin and uh, when you use this uh, switch with a particular pin then it is uh, recommended that you use a pull up resistance with that and here our R1 resistance is acting like that then to see the effect of the input you need a you need to connect one LED and for that we are using pin RD0 ok so the LED has to be attached with pin RD0 and you can see the anode pin is attached with RD0 pin and the cathode pin of the LED is attached with the ground and it is also recommended that you attach one current limiting resistance with this LED so that your LED will be set after this you also have to attach the proper circuitry for VCC ground and reset those are the normal standard circuit that you have used for any other circuit for chip 16 a now we are going to write the code ok the embedded system means it is the hardware and also it is the software so we have done the hardware part circuit part now we have to write the code that is the software part the hardware part that is the circuit part is already done now we have to do the software part that is the code part and for that we will be following one flowchart first of all we have to write the main code so we will start writing it as void main void and the first thing you have to do is you have to make this rb0 pin as the input pin because we are going to attach one switch with that now to make it input pin what we have to do we have to write this b0 equals to 1 this b0 means the this b is the register which sets the direction now here we need it for pin number 0 so we have written this b0 and we have made it 1 that means the rb0 will be working as the input pin now what now we have to make this rb0 pin as the output pin why because we have to attach one led with that so for doing that we are writing this d equals to 0 we could have also written this d 0 is equals to 0 but here we have written this d equals to 0 what it will do it will make all the pins of the port D as the output though we are not using all those pins of the port D but we have just kept it as uh, output out of this we are using this RD0 only ok now what now we would like to have this LED at its off state in the beginning so to do that what we have to make we have to make this pin that is the anode pin and the cathode pin at the same potential that is at the ground potential so for doing that what we have to do we have to set this pin value to 0 and for doing that we are writing port d is equals to 0 it will set all the pins to 0 value and out of that obviously rd0 is also 0 
So that means this LED will have anode and cathode both at zero potential. So at the beginning LED is not glowing. Now what? Now you have to load the value of pinch point register that in earlier side we have already found it has to be loaded with 0x 0x stands for the hex value 90 you also have to upload or load the value of option underscore reg register that is the value is 0x00 and that's it after that you have to do nothing so for doing that what you have to write you have to write a while true loop and after that, there is a semicolon. So it's doing nothing. With this, we complete the main code. Now, after writing the main code, what happens? If this switch is pressed, then the microcontroller will understand that there is a request for interrupt. And then microcontroller will look for ISR. What is ISR? ISR stands for interrupt subroutine. That is the code that has to be executed when the interrupt has occurred. This code has to be written by the user beforehand. Now we will see that how to write this ISR code. So for writing that, we start it in this manner. Okay. And what we want to do inside the ISR? We would like to toggle the LED. And the LED is attached with pin RD0. So what we write, if RD0 equals to equals to 0, then make RD0 is equals to 1, else you keep it as 0. That means if the LED is off, then you make it on, or if it is already on, then you make it off. And that's it. But one more important point, that is a very very important point, that you have to clear the interrupt flag. Now to clear the interrupt flag, you have to write this line, INTF is equals to 0. So with this, your ISR subroutine, uh, ISR is also completed, already we had written the main code, the main code is completed, the ISR is completed, what you have to do, you have to include the header file and your code is ready. Your code is ready to build. You can use MPLAB IDE and Using that, you can generate the hex code from this C code and you can upload this hex code to your microcontroller. But before generating the hex code, what you have to do? You have to set up few config files and also you have to populate the value for crystal frequency. Fine. Now we will show you that if this circuit is working properly. For this, we are going to use the software, the Proteus software, to simulate this circuit. You can see this is the switch which is attached to RB0 and it will generate the interrupt. And if the interrupt occurs, then this LED will change its state. So let us press this particular switch and you can see the LED is what? The LED is glowing, right? Now again, if we press this switch, the LED will go to off state, right? That means our circuit is working properly. For this video, that's all. Hope you all have understood that how to work with interrupt for P16F877A. Still, if you have any kind of query, if you have any query, you can drop email to enquiry at the rate xesp.in. Thank you all.